Hello and welcome to Managing Exposure, a Grounded Theory of Burnout, Resilience, and Critical Care Nurses. My name is Jennifer Jackson. I am a nurse researcher with a background in critical care nursing, and this video explains my thesis I did for my master's, which was a research study looking at how nurses become burnt out or resilient in critical care. I did this research because I wanted to learn more about how nurses become resilient so that I could support my colleagues in critical care and learn more about how we can create workplaces that support nursing resilience. So what's the background for this research? We know that nurses experience a variety of sources of adversity in critical care environments and elsewhere. This is nothing new. It's been well established that nursing is a hard job. We know that many nurses in critical care experience burnout, but we also know that burnout is not inevitable and that nurses can be resilient. We also understand resilience as a process. Resilience is not something you are or aren't. It's not a personality trait. It's something that you can become, you can foster, you can create for yourself. It's a process that you can go through and achieve resilience as an um, indicator or as an outcome. So to give you a little bit of context, I did this research in 2015. This was done at a major Canadian academic teaching hospital, and I worked with 11 nurses in a critical care setting. So this is the findings of this research study, and this is the theory that I created called Managing Exposure. So it begins at the green part with workplace adversity. Um, this process starts when a nurse faces something that they find difficult or challenging in the workplace. This can exist across a variety of levels and can be everything from really macro concepts like politics, organizational policy, um, healthcare budgeting, and can extend through things like the nature of critical care, the amount of technology that's used in critical care settings, um, horizontal bullying and violence in nursing, down to interpersonal conflict, um, respect for the nursing profession amongst the inter interprofessional team, and other factors. So basically to say there's a lot of different ways that nurses can be negatively affected in a workplace. These can range from very broad to very um, narrow in terms of scope, but they are all very toxic and exert a strong negative effect. And for some nurses, no matter how good their coping skills, if the adversity is high enough, they are going to become overwhelmed and burnt out. So adversity is what starts this process. The next piece, the yellow, is situational awareness. And this is a nurse's ability to say, what's happening around me and what do I reflect on and what can I do about it? So I'm being bullied at work, what options do I have? If I talk to my manager, will I face retribution? If I say nothing, will it continue? All of these kinds of critical thinking processes, this reflects um, situational awareness. Then we get to the pink part, managing exposure. This is the core category, and this is the most important part of the theory. Managing exposure has four different pieces, protecting, processing, distancing, and decontaminating. So we can think of this with a classic nursing example. So say you're working with a patient who has SARS or H1N1. You would put on protective equipment, go into the room and work with the patient, and leave, take the protective equipment off, and then spend time elsewhere in the unit doing your charting or preparing supplies. We know that that same process that we go through to protect ourselves from infectious pathogens is the same thing that nurses can do psychologically. They can protect themselves emotionally by maybe having some professional distance between themselves and the patients. They can process what happens to them, most importantly, by talking to colleagues and talking to people who can relate to their experiences. They can decontaminate from their exposure by having strong relationships at work, positive relationships outside of work, and also creative, meaningful, and physical activities that nurses do in order to restore themselves. And finally, Nurses need to have space. They need to get physically removed from the bedside, from the unit, and sometimes from the critical care setting. So some things that were really, really key was that nurses had an opportunity to talk about the things that were happening to them. 
whether this was with colleagues, with a psychologist, with the employee assistance program, any number of things, but that nurses had an opportunity to talk about what was going on and they had chances to get away from the critical care setting so that they had time to enact these other managing exposure techniques and have time to just decompress away. So it was very important that nurses get breaks and it was also very important that nurses are able to be granted vacation. Finally, we get to uh, the blue piece, which is the indicators of managing exposure. So this shows how well everything is going. We have some nurses in critical care settings that thrive. They love being there and they're totally passionate about their jobs. There are some nurses that are resilient, that face difficulty and, and have some struggles, but generally are able to move forward in a positive manner. There are some nurses that describe themselves at a survival level, so saying, I still feel anxious when I come to work sometimes and I struggle a bit, but generally I like what I do. Whereas there were other nurses who were definitely burnt out and saying, I just come here, I do what I'm told, I go home and I'm counting down the weeks or days or months to retirement. So we had a whole range of experiences. There's also the theoretical extension to post-traumatic stress disorder. Uh, this is a psychiatric diagnosis, so I didn't look into this specifically in this study, but I could see where if a nurse is experiencing burnout, they have the potential to reach PTSD as well. So if a nurse doesn't have uh, the yellow piece, situational awareness, they're automatically going to become burnt out because they're not going to be able to uh, use the techniques of managing exposure or the pink part. They're going to bypass that, so they will end up burnt out. The other thing that this does is this diagram provides a framework, and although this process is very fluid, it shows it here in kind of a flat, linear way. That's not how it occurs in real life. It, you can go back and forth and in and through these categories quite a bit, um, but for the purpose of explaining, I drew it this way in order to make the explanation clear. It's important to note that if a nurse becomes burnt out, they're not stuck there. They have opportunities that they can use more of the managing exposure techniques um, and they can maybe have time away from the clinical setting, do more decontaminating, and then they could potentially become resilient. The other important thing that this diagram shows is that there's lots of places where we can intervene. Burnout is not something that just happens and it is also not the fault of an individual nurse. We see that burnout and resilience run on the same track. So just like breakups and marriage are both products of dating, we know that burnout and resilience are both products of managing exposure. So this is a call for nurses, for nurse leaders, for people in management, for all kinds to look and say, where along this pathway can we intervene? Can we decrease the amount of adversity in our workplace? Can we support nurses to manage their exposure? Can we help nurses to manage by making um, some supports more available to them? Or can we help nurses to recognize if they're experiencing burnout and see if we can provide measures to help them uh, reach more resilient indicator? So there's lots of places along here that we have opportunities that we can do something. So what is the bottom line of this study? We know that nurses can be resilient and we can roadmap how a nurse goes from experiencing workplace adversity to becoming resilient. We know that nursing burnout and resilience manifest from the same place. They both start with workplace adversity and reflect how well a nurse is able to manage exposure. We also know that there are learned behaviors nurses can use to foster their resilience and the resilience of their colleagues. There's also lots of points where nurse leaders can intervene to create workplaces that support nursing resilience. So the main message for this research study is when we support resilience, we have stronger nurses and better health care. I encourage you to check out my website for more information or feel free to contact me by email or on Twitter. I'd also like to thank everyone who participated in this research study and everybody who supported me as I went through the research process. 
For more information, you can check out my thesis online or see a longer video that explains more about the study.